Okay, wonderful. So, welcome everyone. Glad to see so many of you here. Um, we've got a phenomenal uh, set of content for you over the next kind of 90 minutes or so, all around the impact of AI and HR. My name's Ian Bailey, and I lead all of the research that we do at Cognition X uh, around HR. And one thing that we find um, that we're discovering with our research at the moment is there's a huge appetite to learn more about this topic of AI and how it can affect HR and HR problems. But then there's this huge gap around really understanding it and really getting deep. And that's the gap that we're trying to solve. And how can we provide advice around all of this? One is through a platform that we have and the other is events like this and getting great speakers along. So, I'm really, really excited to announce all of the content today. I hope you can stick around for the full 90 minutes or so. First up, I'm going to introduce, um, we've got Dr. Frida Polly from Pymetrics and Mel Jiki from Unilever, and they're going to talk through their case study around how they've used AI for the recruitment process at Unilever. So without any further ado, I'm going to get out of the way and introduce these guys to you. All right, thank you. Great. Thank you very much, everyone, for being here. This is my first time doing things with uh, headphones. As Mel likes to say, it's a bit of a silent disco experience, um, So, but happy to do it. So thank you all for coming. The topic of the presentation today is really about how can we use AI in hiring to really look at people's potential for a role rather than other things that we might be currently evaluating them on, and how does that impact the results? So. This is a uh, study, a meta-analysis that was published in the Harvard Business Review, basically showing that of all the things you can use to predict job fit, the resume uh, or job experience actually is the least predictive. And yet we all know that that is the most commonly used tool um, for a variety of reasons, mostly because it's the easiest to use. However, if you look at this graph, the thing that is most predictive is a multi-measure test, so a test that is looking at multiple different aspects of a person's personality, cognitive traits, and so on. So what we have, I'm sorry, let me just flip back to the slide. The challenge with, again, the multi-measure testing is that generally speaking, historically, these have not been very scalable. So the reason resumes get used is because it's very easy to drop a resume. Multi-measure tests used to be four-hour uh, endeavors that involved a PhD like myself and really weren't very scalable. However, I think that the world of technology and big data is really changing that, and that's what I'm here to put forth to you. Because right now, the situation is that 75 to 90% of people are rejected by resume alone, and if we think that it's the least predictive form of understanding someone's potential for a job, then obviously the downstream results are not going to be great. So who are we? We are a company um, that works with innovative companies like Unilever to really bring data and artificial intelligence to the market in a way that makes hiring not only more predictive, but also more fair. And so aside from some of the great partners that we work with and number of people that have gone through the platform, we're very proud of Audit AI. We just open sourced this on GitHub last, year, last month. And it basically is our way of auditing all of our algorithms to ensure that they are gender and ethnic bias free. They also happen to be socioeconomic bias free. So they're very powerful in producing diversity outcomes as well as improving predictive outcomes in hiring. And we're going to actually speak about this a little later in our presentation. So hopefully we don't have to introduce Unilever to you then. It's always better when we put up our brands because hopefully you're one of our 2.5 billion consumers that touch and feel our brands every day. Just to give you a little bit of um, size and scale of Unilever, we're in 190 countries. We have 160,000 employees globally. We're the number one employer of choice in over 40 of those countries and that's really, really important to us. And we're a, a company that really leads by purpose because we believe that companies with purpose last, our brands with purpose will grow faster, and people with purpose will really thrive. And it's those people with purpose that we are on a mission to, to find. And back um, in my role in Singapore in about 2015, I was given the great opportunity to refresh our graduate recruitment process. And instead of refreshing, we ripped it up and decided to, to start all over again. 
Why? Because we were looking for a very different type of talent to be able to, to grow our businesses, to be purposeful within our company. We get about 250,000 at that time graduates that apply to us globally every year and only 800 roles we have available. So you can imagine if you think about that resume predicament, how many people we are rejecting. And those people are loving and buying our brands every day. So we don't want to be giving them a bad experience um, as a candidate because we want to be delighting them as a candidate and a consumer as well. So what we did is we put together a uh, request for proposal and we went out to, to really look at a new innovative way of not finding people and judging them by their performance, but really looking at what's their potential and what could they do for Unilever. And we came up um, with a five-step process, a four-step process, rather. And three of those steps, we use AI and there's no human touch. The human touch just comes in at the end. But we believe that our recruitment process is now far more human than it ever was. In level one, instead of having a resume, you answer some very basic questions about yourself uh, as an individual and upload a lot of your information via LinkedIn. It takes about five minutes. The second step is where we use Pymetric and we measure the social and cognitive traits of our candidates, looking at where they have a great fit and where they have that potential to thrive. Not asking them what have you done in the past because we know many graduates don't go and get a job at uni these days. They just don't have the opportunity or they haven't had that depth of experience yet. So we're simply looking at how is their brain geared and wired and how might they be able to thrive in our company. The third step is where we use HireVue, and this is like a digital uh, selfie interview. They answer many different kind of cases, uh, the, the real kind of life cases that you get every day happening at Unilever. And again, through AI, we're measuring how they're um, performing there and how they're answering the cases, how they uh, go through their process. Level four, you get um, an, in, an intervention by a recruiter who gives you a call and says, congratulations, you've made it to our discovery center. Come along. But before we just bring you along to our discovery center and meet you face to face, we put you in a virtual setting. We're gonna collaborate with those other people, not compete, collaborate, with those other people that are gonna come and visit um, on the same day at the discovery center. You work on a task virtually, that then you come to the discovery center, which is a face to face interaction, a brand new kind of way of uh, doing an assessment center. And that's where you'll finally get to meet some of the hiring managers at Unilever. Every step of the way, whether you move on or not, you get feedback. So your, um, your profile's not just kind of going into a black hole and you're wondering, what the hell did I do wrong? Why aren't they getting back to me? Why aren't I fitting here? You actually get some kind of feedback to help you and to build those employability um, skills of our candidates. The other great thing um, that Pymetrics does is be able to say, hey, you're not a great fit for Unilever, but you're a really great fit for Accenture, let's say. And here is the route to Accenture. And we got some really great candidate feedback from, and, and telling us that, oh, thank you so much Unilever for helping us get a job in another company because you referred us there and we we're already thriving. And we know that, you know, 30% of the graduates that we hire leave within the first year. So we really want to make sure that we're getting that right fit and that they're having a great experience. Many, many people have heard our story because it's been out there for a while. And I think um, the important thing was when we were looking for the tools is really finding a tool that wasn't bright and shiny, wasn't the coolest thing on the block, but really had the science behind it that was doing what we were looking for. Thank you. And uh, while we may, may not be the coolest thing on the block, uh, we do bring scientific uh, rigor to what we're doing, which we think is uh, super important. So my background is I'm a Harvard and MIT trained cognitive neuroscientist, and those are the assessment tools that we use. So the big thing about them is basically they do two things really well. They predict outcomes very well, and they lack any gender and ethnic bias. And the second thing that we do slightly differently than others is that we use a data-driven approach to understanding high fit at a company. So we don't uh, do the traditional uh, competency mapping framework. We really use a strengths-based approach married to big data. So really what we do is we say, Unilever, tell us who are the high performers in these seven roles. We will take their data. We will do some overlay of competency mapping, but mostly we will look at the data that they have showing what their strengths and weaknesses are and figure out what the specific fit is to that role. And to Mel's point, the nice piece about this is that it allows us not only 
ability to understand if you're a fit for the role you've applied to, but also allows us to understand fit to other roles at Unilever, and if not, outside of Unilever. So it's really a strengths-based approach rather than a one-size-fits-all. The other thing that I was mentioning earlier is that we really take great care in not perpetuating bias. So again, as you can imagine, there are certain roles where either gender or ethnic composition is limited, and companies nowadays don't want that to remain the case. So basically, we've developed a tool that basically looks at any new algorithm we've built, checks it for gender and ethnic bias, and if that bias is there, we basically will de-weight some of the 90 different features that we measure that may be causing that bias until the algorithm is shown to be statistically free of any bias towards gender or ethnicity. And again, because we're not using the resume, it actually has no bias towards socioeconomic <laughs> status either in the form of where did you go to school, that kind of thing. And so we're always looking to create impact at Unilever and I think the, the results speak for themselves. So a lot of our story, I think people get excited by the efficiency that we've created. So yes, it's a million in savings every year. It's saving 50,000 hours of a candidate's time. So they're not sitting there and aimlessly filling in hundreds and hundreds of fields only to get rejected at the next step. We've saved 75% of our recruiter time. And many people go, oh, what did you do with those recruiters? We actually repurposed them and now they call the candidates. They help them understand the kind of process before the discovery center and they feel much more fulfilled rather than kind of putting candidates from one box into the other. The other is that we really shortened our recruitment cycle. It's a competitive talent market out there. Before it was taking uh, four, mostly six months in many of our countries to get a candidate from the day that they put it in um, the application form right through to hire. And by the time we get them in, they're kind of deflated with the whole process. And so now we can do that within um, two weeks. We've really increased the yield that we have. So in our assessment centers, because we weren't really finding the right people, we were having a conversion rate of one out of six. We've moved it to a discovery center and we've had um, good rates of getting four out of six candidates every time, which tells us that our, our process is working. And so far we've had 300 uh, and more thousand kind of applicants go through and we work um, in iterative learning loops to continuously um, hone in the algorithm and Yuande who's standing over there works in our HR data and analytics team and she's really working very closely with us to make sure that those learning loops are in there and that we're consistently learning. So three things that we wanted to talk to you aside from the great efficiency gains um, that we could see. One was we're getting a far better diverse and inclusive group of talent and that's what we want to do because we want them to be representative of our consumers and really help us grow in places that we haven't before. We really want to be candidate centric. Today is the age of people experience. It should be the age of candidate experience just like it is customer experience. And as a consumer goods company, that really um, is important to us. And then where to next? So this was a great success story, but how are we leveraging throughout our business and going and, and taking this further? And we'll share that a little bit with you. Perfect. So these are U.S. results where we uh, have been tracking the most closely, um, but they're very impressive and very indicative of the results that Unilever has seen wor worldwide. So in the U.S., they used to go to maybe 10 campuses live um, and maybe get applications from a couple hundred schools. After implementing this process, they looked at applicants from 2,500 schools, which meant that the socioeconomic diversity of the candidates was incredibly, incredibly improved, um, as well as the representation of people of color that were normally underrepresented in the workforce increased by 16%. But the thing that struck people the most was really the, the fact that they were getting such a different and diverse socioeconomic pool of hires actually led them to need to change their relocation policies because people couldn't you know, pick up, move cross country, rent an apartment and buy furniture because they were of such a different socioeconomic background than the more traditional college applicant that they were getting. And this was a very, very powerful story for them. And so I just want to go to um, uh, then the next piece of what Mel said, which is basically that it's ex they, very candidate centric. So what that means is that, again, if you are um, looking at applying to a particular role at Unilever, first of all, you have a 98% completion rate. So a lot of assessments have very big drop-offs. We have 98% completion rate in large part because we give people feedback, we make it fun, um, and so on. Secondly, we got a 4.5 out of 5 
candidate engagement score across the entire process, which I think is really speaking to how candidate-centric is. But the thing that I think is most important in making a candidate-centric is that, again, it's a strengths-based approach, not a one-size-fits-all. So if you get um, not passed through for your job of choice at Unilever, we can actually assess your fit for other roles at the company and then also roles at other companies. And we got emails from people saying, I applied to this role at Unilever. Unfortunately, I didn't make it all the way through. Um, however, I've now got my dream job at this other company that's working with Pemetrix. So to me, that is one of the things that I'm most proud about in terms of the system that we've built. And then just really quickly wanted to give you a candidate story to hear from the uh, candidate themselves in terms of the difference. Chanel worked with us last summer as one of our interns with the marketing organization. She was able to get her foot into the door of an opportunity that might have been closed before, and she was able to make the most of the opportunity and really shine. I definitely noticed we had a pretty diverse pool of people that did end up doing the internship. So to know they were all being seen on the same level, I think that's important for everyone to know that you know they're valued the same way. Great. And we didn't actually prompt anyone to say those things. This kind of was their true feelings about the process. Thanks, Frida. So off the back of um, the success of the, the grad process, we're now re-looking um, under a project called Next Generation Recruitment at how we will take some of these success stories and apply that to our experienced hires. But we know that one size doesn't fit all, so it won't be the same kind of process, but we will take some of the, the learnings, and we're, we're absolutely doing that now. Um, internal mobility is also becoming a very, very hot topic for many HR professionals and how you're tapping into that talent that you have internally, how you're reskilling them and redeploying them and going where they need to be at that right important point in time. And we really take a functional approach to careers at the moment. And really more and more we see that blending and morphing of functions. We see end-to-end -end approaches becoming really important and therefore that fluidity of talent is going to be key. So a project um, that myself and Ed Jay down the back there is working on at the moment is uh, around internal fluidity, where we will have a platform and be able to start to move our people around. And we will plug, again, the Pymetrics tool in there to be able to look at also the raw potential. So we have lots of great data on the performance of our people, on the skills of our people. But what about if you just want an experience that you haven't had before? How do we get to know that you're going to kind of thrive? And you know, how is somebody going to take a chance on you? And that's exactly what um, the internal mobility is going to be about. And then Nirvana will be when we have internal mobility and we can mix that with kind of the experienced hires. And we have kind of a platform approach where we're starting to tap into the gig economy. We've got the internal economy and then the kind of best of the outside world. And we can really find that right person for the right job at the right time where we need them and be able to upskill and upsize um, fast and then redeploy that um, in another matter. So that's uh, where we're really going and really trying to create that whole ecosystem. But really the, the digital grad process was, was a real eye opener for a lot of people, kind of helping them understand that we have to change as a big corporate. We can't do things like we used to. You can't pilot to perfection and then kind of roll it out because the technology by the time you do that is going to be redundant. It's working like a software company and really kind of rolling out at, at pace and pivoting when you need to and killing things when you need to and kind of moving on. So this is just a, a little way that we're looking at it. So we're, very, we're starting off internally, looking at the skills, the experience, and the raw potential. And then we're going to start with kind of roles and projects. We really believe, like um, Ellen Shook at Accenture says, that it's going from workforce planning to work planning and really understanding kind of what are those pieces of work to be done rather than kind of moving full-time equivalents around. And this is just a bit of an example of a heat map um, that comes from the, the grad process that kind of shows that as we look at the profiles of our people within our business, and, and remember this is only our kind of young talent, that there is great overlap in those functions. Of course we can kind of work in, in different uh, tasks, in different kind of projects across the, the business, and this is absolutely where we're, we're moving to. So that's it. Thanks for listening.